Hello. In this video, we're going to um, do a simulation of a common emitter amplifier. We're going to first do um, operating point analysis to figure out the DC operating point. Then we're going to do a transient analysis to verify the gain. And finally, we're going to do an AC analysis to look at the frequency response of the circuit. Uh, so let's start with the DC bias point analysis. I have entered that, that OP statement in order to perform a uh, operating point calculation. Um, and I'm going to be plotting some values. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with VCC, which I've set to 20 volts. And there it is. Um, I'm expecting that my base voltage is going to be sitting at around 1.7 volts, uh, which is the case down there. My emitter voltage should be about uh, 0.7 volts lower, so at around 1 volt, there is my emitter voltage. Uh, my collector voltage uh, should be centered between the supply and ground, so 10 volts, and there it is. Um, and that's about it. Those are all my uh, DC voltages. If I want to take a look at my collector current, uh, my current um, axis appears on the other side, and it's around 0.5 milliamps. So, so far, everything that I will expect uh, matching the calculations of the actual circuit analysis. I'm going to go ahead now and perform a transient analysis. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and comment my data OP spice directive and uncomment my transient analysis directive. I'm going to rerun my simulation. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete uh, these plots. So edit delete and I'm going to get rid of the current um, I think as well as the voltages which, what I'm going to be plotting is actually the um, the input signal as well as the output signal so my input signal will be V sub S and it is uh, a sine wave of amplitude 10 millivolts and frequency 10 kilohertz um, I'm plotting 0.5 milliseconds, just yeah, so that I get around five, um, five periods. And the reason for that is if you plot much more than that, then it's very difficult to see anything. So if I plot it. And as I expect, it's just a, a sinusoid between uh, plus and minus 10 millivolts. I'm going to go ahead and plot the output voltage. And I can see that it is an inverting amplifier uh, with a gain of 100 um, or close to 100. Uh, if it was a perfect 100, it will go all the way to uh, 1 volt. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide this into two different panes. And I'm going to move my VS or actually my V out to the top pane. All right, so that we can see the difference. Um, and that's about it. We, if we wanted to see the effect of the coupling capacitors, um, I could go ahead and plot, you know, for my input signal. Um, I can see it's centered around zero. You can see that, you know, if I go across my coupling capacitor number one, I should expect to see the same signal, but centered at the DC value of the base voltage, which was, which was 1.7 volts. So I can go ahead and do that. Plot it there, and you can see it's the same signal at around 1.7 volts. Uh, same thing for the emitter, same signal, except it's going to be sitting at around 1 volt. And then um, for my collector signal, um, if I were to take the signal at the collector of the amplifier, um, I would expect to have the same output signal, meaning an inverted amplified voltage, um, except it's going to be centered around the DC value of the collector, which was 10 volts. So I can go ahead and plot that. And I can see it's uh, the exact same thing. In order to see it more clearly, I'm going to go ahead and move that. To my top plot. And somehow it's disappeared because my axis haven't moved. So I'm going to put this uh, between 20 and uh, minus one just to see more clearly okay so there it is um, this will be the output signal but before um, the coupling capacitor so it is shifted by a dc value of around 10 volts 
after the coupling capacitor, the DC offset has been removed. Um, and that's about it. Uh, let's take a look now at the AC analysis. And I'm going to comment my transient analysis and comment my AC analysis. And I'm going to really just focus on the output voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and delete. Um, all those, and I think I'm going to go ahead and remove my uh, my lower plot pane. So I have everything in a single plot pane. Let me go ahead and rerun my AC simulation now. And I'm going to take a look at the uh, frequency response at the output. Um, and this plots both the uh, magnitude response and the phase response. This will be the axis for the magnitude response. That will be the axis for the phase response. I'm going to go ahead and delete the phase response because we're not going to focus on that at the moment. Uh, we can see, as we expect, um, the amplifier behaves as a bandpass filter. There is a midband region, and the gain in the midband region is approximately constant, and it's close to 40 dBs, which will be a gain of 100. Um, going to go ahead and add um, my grid so that we can see things more clearly. Um, so a gain of 100, uh, let's go ahead and calculate or, or find the um, high and low cutoff frequencies. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add my cursors. So here are my cursors. Gonna move them somewhere out of the way. Maybe up here. Um, and I can see my uh, my cursor one is sitting at a frequency of 10 kilohertz. So if I uh, go there and just grab it, I should be able to move it. And I'm gonna calculate since my midband gain uh, it appears to be 39, my 3 dB frequency or my low cutoff frequency will be at the value of 3 dB below that or 36 dB. Oops. And there it is. Um, and I can see that my uh, frequency for the low cutoff frequency is 823 hertz, that which is very close to what we had calculated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a second cursor. Actually, I'll just go with the same one. Uh, so I have my, for my high frequency, I will have, again, going to the uh, minus 3 dB point, that's 793 kilohertz, uh, which is close to the, I think it was 800 that we had calculated uh, for the high kind of frequency for this circuit. Now I'm going to make a couple of changes to my circuit to see how that affects my, um, my frequency response. So the first thing I'm going to do is edit my uh, value for CBE. Oops. I'm going to increase it to 10 microfarads, and that's supposed to lower my low cut of frequency by a factor of 10. So instead of having it at um, 800 uh, hertz, I will expect to have it at around 80 hertz. Let's see if that's the case. Oh, I commented my spice directive. Okay, and there it is. I'm gonna eliminate the face, and we can see if I touch a cursor um, sitting at 10 kilohertz. So if I go there, and I grab it. Uh, this is a still 39, so my minus 3 dB will be at 36. And I can see that my frequency is now 80 Hz. My upper cutoff frequency hasn't changed. This is still sitting at around 800 kHz. Uh, so that's a good thing. 
and let's take a look at other circuit modifications uh, that I can make. Uh, for example, let's imagine that I were to uh, load my circuit by lowering the value of my load resistance. And let's imagine that I make it comparable to my um, RC resistance, which is approximately the output resistance of the circuit. So that's 20k. I'm going to make my load resistance also equal to 20k. Now the parallel combination of these two is going to be 10k. So essentially I'm um, decreasing my gain by a factor of one half. If I rerun my simulation, eliminate my phase, I can see that my gain is now uh, lower. It's no longer close to 40 dBs, but it's now closer to 34 dBs. I can attach my cursor and um, Is sitting at 700 kilohertz, so somewhere around here. And I can see, uh, yeah, my gain is now 33 dBs. Uh, my low cutoff frequency is going to be sitting at the 30 dB point. Hopefully, it hasn't moved. It's still at around 85 hertz, but my high cutoff frequency has now moved um, to 1.5 megahertz. And the reason for that is. Um, by reducing the gain of the amplifier by half, uh, we are basically having less of a Miller effect. Remember, the Miller effect um, multiply the input capacitance times the gain. So instead of multiplying the input capacitance times 100, now we're multiplying it times 50. And thus, um, we will have a, a lower effective capacitance and therefore a higher bandwidth or higher um, high frequency. The other thing that we can do to the circuit is to add a load capacitance and see the effect of that. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to add a capacitor. Oops. That was kind of the wrong place, but hopefully I can move it. And put it in parallel with my load. Um, let's imagine I make it 50 picofarads and I'm going to go ahead and wire it up. my wires. There we go. And now and I'm gonna add a ground node right there. The last thing I'm gonna do is rename that capacitor just to make it clear is the load capacitance. And I should expect this is going to have an effect on my um, high cut of frequency. So let's verify that. Again, I'm going to eliminate the face. Um, and we can just visually see that it's had the, an effect on it. Now let's go ahead and grab our cursor back. This is at 1.5 megahertz. There it is. And find the minus 3 dB point. And that's now 200 and, uh, around 290 kilohertz. And so this verifies uh, the values that we have found in our calculations, as well as the effect that different changes made on the circuit will have on the frequency response. Thank you.